Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to our channel. And of course, we have the lovely Renuka, whose information is in the description box below. She will be channeling my lovely Professor Eric about a topic that I have struggled with so much. I'm going to have a little announcement uh, first, but basically the topic, one of them that we're going to start with is when to help our loved ones and when not to. And for me as a mother, it's always been hard to know how much to step in and, uh, you know, save a child versus is that going to mess up his whole spiritual path or her whole spiritual path? But anyway, Renuka, you have an announcement. Yeah. Uh, so Eric is here and uh, he's asked me to announce this uh, special workshop, um, not more of a workshop, but more of a question answer session on January the 26th, which is a Sunday. We are going to decide the time and post the details on our socials, both you, Eliza and myself, uh, on our Facebook and Instagram. Instagram pages and it will be a free session uh, but the basic objective of this session will be to answer all the doubts and queries and confusions related and relevant to the soul plan theory Eric has been teaching uh, through the lectures uh, of course it will be free and I'll be available throughout online and people, people can join in and get out as per their ease and their convenience but um they will be allowed to ask all sorts of questions connected to karma, reincarnation. Uh, personal questions won't be allowed because it will involve channeling and yeah. sessions are more apt for it. Yes. But yes, regarding the soul plan theory, regarding whatever he has been teaching in the lectures, um, everything will be answered. Of course, I'll be channeling him. All the answers will come from him directly and I'll be available online for two hours. Wow. So that's one big announcement he wanted us to make today. That's awesome. Well, you know, it's free, but is there an avenue by which people can give a donation for the workshop? Uh, yeah, I can post a link and it's up to them if they wish to. That would be nice. Yeah. I love that energy exchange sort it's of thing. Okay. Yeah, it's up to them. It's up to them. All right. All right, Mr. Mr. Eric. Hi, I love you. He's saying, hi, mom. And uh, I'm so glad we are doing this. And he's saying, mom. It's all about me extending a supportive hand in one more different way. You know, mom, he's saying, you know, mom, these lectures are one way communication. And I would love them to come online, ask me difficult questions, ask me confusions and clarify all those doubts and confusions they have about the theory, because I really want it to work for them. I really want them to use it practically in their lives. And of course, whatever we teach through our lectures, it's in a restricted time and space period. So I want to give more of myself to them. So it's mom, it's more of an extension of these lectures where I'll be available online so that they can ask all the questions. Beautiful. It's just an extension. You think it's just an extension what we are doing. And we'll do we'll be doing so much more, mom. I I am so much um aware of how much people need guidance and direction. And I'm going to do that through a lot of your other mediums also in so many different ways next year. Mom, it's all going to be how to handle this life, how to handle our emotions, how to work our soul plan. You're such so a good boy. My good <laughs> boy. I'm so proud of you. I love you so much, honey. And he's like, thank you, mama. <laughs> <laughs> he bats his eyelids and he's saying, thank you, mama. He's exactly like this. <laughs> so yeah he's saying mom you have no idea how much i do it <laughs> for her indian people like i am available yeah that he's right the workshops that i'm doing in india he's so much available 24 7 so much available to connect and practice our psychic connections so much available to give answers and available for automatic writing sessions as well i'm not sure elisa i have shared this with you correct me if i'm wrong but you know, whenever I'm teaching automatic writing sessions in my workshop and in my Indian community, uh, he's been always so available and always uh, so forthcoming. If people are not able to connect psychically with their loved ones or their spirit guides, you know, he chimes in and he says, connect with me. Because I don't know, somehow it's really easy to form a bond and connection with him. It you know, is with true. Him. He's yeah, I, 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 a lot of yeah. other spirits. You know, I, 
I had taught so many people to connect through automatic writing, and all those people who have uh, you know found it difficult, um, rather difficult to form a bond with their spirit guide or loved ones. Eric has chimed in and said, "I'll come and write with you," and they it's been so easy for them to connect with him to write with wow. him. And then when he starts writing with them, he makes sure he brings them up to a point where it's so where it gets so easier for them to finally then start connecting with their own spirit guide, oh. with their loved ones. And he's saying, and he's saying, Mom, why do I do that? Like, why they ultimately have to go to their spirit guides because their spirit guides have more power and more access, and and it's their duty and their job to guide them. Right? I am right. just a facilitator, so I come to make sure they connect. the energy is growing and the connection and the practice is there and once they reach that point i then reconnect them to their spirit guide so i think mom i've been so much available now i need to be more available to our viewers in these you know different ways where i'm practically personally available with my own energy directly connecting and communicating with them and i suppose that's why he's also started giving mediumship lessons which are very subjective personal sessions um through my channeling sessions through the website he's so and you much give, you teach people to become mediums right yes okay yes. and and these are not joint classes or workshops in groups these are very subjective individualized sessions because he likes to give personal attention because he says and i've asked him why personal sessions you know, why can't we have a group call and he says because every soul is their energy is so subjective their level of psychic capabilities which are already developed is so subjective their minds are so different the preparation that he you know he teaches for the mind to get prepared to connect is so different with everyone you know his spiritual practices the routines that he gives are different for every individual because right. he says every individual their soul their energy their abilities their mind is different so i think uh, he is more geared towards uh you know helping people connect and communicate directly right um of course he's always said you know because that empowerment and you know you can't have people dependent on you you need to empower them you know give them the abilities and the gifts to use for life so that they are not dependent on anybody else i think he's working more towards that at least through me that's what yeah. i am understanding now okay all right so, topic of the day let's go roll with it yeah So he's writing uh, today's topic. He's saying help, and you know he's writing in uh, clear, bold letters with a lot of exclamation marks. Help! <laughs> so, he's, so he's saying the topic today is uh, how do we help, and should we help? Should we not help? And uh, again, he's writing one another important question again in bold letters. Um, what? what is the right form of help he saying mom uh, so many times in our relationships we feel so much confused when our loved ones when our friends when our family when our you know soulmates whatever you feel are going through a tough time we feel so confused about what is the right form of help how do we help them there are times mom when we have gone through helpless situations where we we don't understand how to help and yet we feel their pain we feel their suffering we feel their struggles and to add to that we don't understand how to help them we feel so helpless and it's sort of a suffering for us also you know when that happens and he's saying the most important aspect of help is which most people don't understand is if you help which is not the right form of help and it is not at the right time it does invite karma yeah i think mom i'm not i'm not trying to scare you here i i have all i think i'm not trying to scare you uh, it's it's more to do with inviting lessons karma is more to do with lessons and if you are right. helping someone it's not punishment karma is not punishment it's nothing to be feared it, it's yeah. it's the engine of our spiritual or our soul growth and evolution right Yeah, and he's saying, "Mom, when I when I'm saying inviting karma, it's sometimes it's looked at. Oh, we are inviting some form of punishment or negativity." He's saying, "I don't mean that. I don't yeah. say the same jargon with the same meaning, and right. that's why I'm clarifying myself." He's saying, "When I say invite karma, means what you are doing essentially is a soul has chosen a problem, has chosen a setback to learn something from it." 
now if you are someone attached and connected to a soul who is going through a certain problem you out of your attachment and your emotions tend to help that soul to come out of that problem before the soul has learned what that particular problem was meant to teach that soul you think mom how is that help sometimes we don't understand the real meaning and real essence of help he's writing yeah. you know he, we think we are helping but if you are helping a soul to come out of a difficult situation especially a situation which was meant to teach that soul what you are doing is creating an obstacle in the path of growth for that particular soul how is that help mom that yeah. cannot be termed help because mm -hmm. i have always said we are here to learn we are here to right. learn and grow not to suffer but to learn yes and if you are preventing your loved one from learning which is the basic essence of life how are you helping you are in fact yeah okay so it's, it's thievery yeah yeah and it's from that by in all my sessions and it's been uh, it's been really challenging to explain people that during channeling sessions when people have asked oh can i help my son or oh, can i help my husband in this way oh can i help my best friend in this way and he's always said please avoid please restrict please avoid please be balanced and you know people give them comfort you can give them comfort and love as they stumble and struggle right and he's saying of course mom and i'm going to list down the right forms of help and that's why i said the most important question is what is the right form of help you yeah. know it's he's saying it's important to understand i am not asking you to not help i am asking you to be very discerning of the kind of help the form of help and of course the timing of help also okay because many times because of our attachments and because of our uh, emotions imbalanced emotions we tend to do stuff for our loved ones for people who want to help and create more issues for them and he's saying this is so common mom yeah and you know we from the spirit world can see the intention is so pure we can see the emotions are so pure the love is strong but then you know they are not helping and it's so sad to see that and it's very important people understand the real essence of help now when i say wrong form of help is inviting karma i'm not mean i'm not being mean here i am just saying that when you help out of turn in the wrong way what is happening is you are creating a karma for yourself in the sense you are creating a lesson for yourself wherein you will need to come back again in the body to learn how to be discerning with your help surrender uh, that's yes. a big one in this case right he saying that like, again he saying mom again there can be so much it can also mm -hmm. be detachment right we are being carried away by our emotions that's why we are trying and he saying mom activity yeah yeah i think mom have you ever ever wondered have you ever um you realized when we are saying oh we are helping the ones we love we are not helping them we are helping ourselves we are triggered and we are in pain and we don't feel comfortable seeing our loved ones go through a difficult situation so the basic intention or the subconscious objective of helping someone else is not helping someone else it's helping myself because i don't want to feel that discomfort of seeing my loved one in a difficult situation So you think, "Mom, it's selfishness. It's not help." If you look but at also, it, but, but it also it's it's telling that loved one that you don't have faith in them to manage on their own. It's like one of the main states of my discipline as a mom for my children was, you know, logical, firm, but loving, logical consequences. So you know, if like Michelle, uh, three days after her, she got her license, she brought my car. scraped it on a boulder getting out of the movie theater and of course she didn't tell me until I went around to that side of hey you think I'm not going to say that so you know she had to pressure watch every house in the neighborhood in order to earn the money for the deductible I said well I didn't mean it why should I have to pay so um, so it, but given with love you know so but uh, yeah so you could do that with any of your loved ones like life has consequences life is just a big bunch of lessons all strung together and you just be there for them when they stumble and scrape their knees and but don't save them from their falls he's saying mom you said it life is 
is all lessons strung together. You think, mom, you said it. It's all lessons and experiences strung together, and the ultimate uh, win of this particular uh, you know slot of games that we are playing, this reincarnation game that we are playing, ultimately de depends on how many lessons we were open to, how many of lessons we went through and we achieved those lessons and how many experiences we were open towards he think that's all that matters at the at the end of the game and he's saying it's important that people don't create more complications by trying to be of help there are right forms of help and he's saying mom uh, we might have chosen a difficult situation or we might not have chosen a difficult situation but uh, someone else trying to help us can always create an obstacle in us learning and growing through that situation or that experience. Yeah. And that's what we need to realize. And he's saying well, there are many lessons for those who help in ways which are not needed or which are not actually helpful. There is There are boundaries, there is detachment, there is balance, there is letting go. Yeah. Uh, there is he's saying there is so much he's saying mom unconditional love also because when you when you love someone unconditionally when it's true pure love you would just know what is the right form of help for that person and you would not uh, you know force yourself upon someone force your help upon someone which is not actually helping unconditional love has that thing he's saying mom you know when you love someone unconditionally you just know intuitively what is the right form to help them but he's saying, but let's come to the actual form of help, which is correct, which is the right form of help. He's saying, okay. we, we here in the spirit world, we believe in the power of prayers. So whenever you feel helpless and whenever you don't understand, you know, how to help your loved one in the best possible way, he's saying prayers are the most important form of help that you can okay. give, to, give to another soul. And he's saying, what kind of prayers, mom? Prayers shouldn't be, oh, take away their problems, oh, take away all their obstacles, oh, God, please don't do this to them, oh, God, please oh, get yeah. them up. Yeah. I think that's not the right form of prayer. I think prayer is a huge topic, Mom. One day I would like to talk about prayers more sure. than what I'm talking today. But he's saying um, the prayer should be to any any energy that you believe in, the prayer should be to give that soul strength to go through that lesson and that situation with wisdom and compassion for self. Mm. He's saying, Mom, it's all about lessons. And if it's all about learning and experiencing, the only thing that a soul requires while in the body is the lessons should come to them with grace and they should have compassion and the lesson should not trouble them or make them suffer so much. The lessons mm. should get easier. So the best form of help that you can give a soul is to pray for them to have so much strength, so much wisdom, that the problem that is coming to teach them is not difficult anymore. It yeah. just comes, it teaches them and they don't suffer as much. They don't go through pain. They are so balanced. They understand the lesson. They learn the lesson and the problem goes up. So he's saying prayer is the best form of help. That's number one. He's writing number one in caps press. And he's saying, mom, the second form of help, which I believe is so much underrated, and which I believe is the reason why therapists are so much in demand is being a very uh, compassionate listener. Mm, yes. You know, and this is me talking now. I have recognized this through my sessions, you know, so many times in so many channeling sessions. I am actually not channeling. You know, people are just there on the screen and they're just sharing their pain. Yeah. You know, they are just, because... Uh, there is so much uh, lack of communication, you know, in our relationships. Oh, yeah. There are so many obstacles and issues in communicating our real pain, our real self. Because there are so many prejudices and conditionings which come up in our relationship. Absolutely. Because of all, because of all the difficult em emotions going in those relationships. The people, are, people just don't have someone to talk to. Someone to share their real self, someone to share their pain with. I have realized it so much through my channeling session. Like I am amazed at the end of channeling session that a person says, oh, it was so nice talking to you. Oh, wonderful channeling session. And I am wondering, but I didn't channel anything. I just heard you out. You know, I just yeah. gave you that. I just gave you that unconditional space and that time for you to share your heart. And by the end of the session, they feel so light, you know. Yeah. 
put so much heel and yet i have done nothing you know it's so people beautiful. need to be heard and acknowledged you know so important yeah and there is so much lack of you know this important uh, form of connection that we feel when we are sharing ourselves unconditionally and openly with someone saying mom we will share and we'll talk about our issues but there is always this uh, this set of conditionings that come into the picture and we are not able to share ourselves completely and he's saying mom anyways when you share yourself with a stranger you're very open you know you don't have yeah. these prejudices and conditionings coming in so i think we can translate that and you know help our loved ones by being very unconditional right. and very compassionate no judgment no judgment and and uh, and give them a compassionate you know listening ear to them give them yeah. our time give them our time or unconditional acceptance and just be there for them he saying the second most important form of help is that because so many times when our loved ones are going through stuff and they get that space to express themselves they get so much clarity and they gain their inner connection with their own souls very strongly because of that and that helps them come out of their problems that helps them get objective they yeah. feel supported they feel heard which yeah. is the most important need in our in us human beings so i think that's the most important second form of help and uh, third is always he saying of oh, mom always try and look at them as souls try and give them an objective view of what you think their lessons are see saying mom this is all about soul plan theory if you know about soul plan if you know about karma if you know about lessons you will be very objectively able to see their lessons and if you give them some hope connected to this theory you know give them some realization that we are a soul you are not this body help them get objective about the situation are you saying i think that do you just tell them uh he's saying mom, it's all about thing he's saying no i don't believe in pushing you know in pushing boundaries their spiritual okay. beliefs and spiritual right. thoughts but we can always try he's saying we can always try and bring certain objectivity in their situations by helping them rise above the emotions and he's saying there are so many ways to do that maybe recommend them to a therapist maybe maybe make oh. them aware of their emotions wherein they are getting imbalance he's saying it's just a very casual practical help in helping them rise above the emotions so that they can come at their own choices at their own decisions so no influencing their choices and decisions because again mom remember <laughs> it's karma right yeah he's saying every soul will go through issues every soul and every soul needs help and yes we need to help each other but the right form of help at the right time is very important anything yes like you said mom at the beginning of the of the video that parents uh, suffer the most because they are so much attached to their children you know it's so yeah. difficult it's so difficult to you know understand how to help your children he's saying mom where parents are concerned in and where they want to help their children it's all about strong boundaries especially those are, with drug problems you know oh oh He's saying so many times parents uh, end up um, making it more difficult for the children. The first thing is not to judge them, and the first most important thing, like he was explaining, the third point: rise above the emotions. Look at them as souls who yeah. have chosen these issues as lessons, and then step back and become a soul, not a parent. When you are acting as a soul, interacting with another soul on that platform, somehow it becomes really easy. to see through their problems and to help them in a very non-judgmental compassionate way because as a parent you become very prejudiced you become very attached and your emotions are imbalanced you become fearful you saying mom fear is the worst thing fear makes you do crazy things and as parents we are always fearful and insecure about our children's safety so you saying yes uh, that equation is where we really need to be balanced we really need to come back to that platform to that reality i am a soul i am a soul my child is a soul the lessons have been chosen now what is the objective form of helping and he's saying most of the time helping our children believing in our children and making them see the real thing does the job but well, uh what about uh, parents who struggle with well my kids strung out on heroin all the time you don't want to enable them you know you don't want to give money what about helping them by making things worse 
by kicking them out, for example, so that they're forced to seek help. But then, saying, no, does that ever happen? Not, he's saying it happens a lot, mom, but I don't support that. You see, mom, with drugs, he's writing. Uh, with drugs, it's mostly the issue is with the minds. Then minds are weak. Yeah. That is why they are not able to resist drugs. The best form of helping these children will be helping them help. keep their minds strong. So mm -hmm. you can't make them suffer or make things worse for them because the mind will get more weaker and then they will not be able to resist the addiction. I, I get so many parents asking me about that and I agree. I totally agree. Get them the help they need. Intervention. Yeah. He's saying all sorts of help which will help them keep their mind stronger. He's saying, mom, drug problem is the mind problem. Yeah. The mind are weak. The mind is not able to resist. The mind is suffering. The mind is in illusions. You know, the mind is so much lost and it tries to gain back that control through addictions, through drugs. So any form of help which is helping them sort out their minds, make their minds stronger, restrict the mind so that they don't, so that the mind does not, you know, get them carried away with their addiction. Okay. So he's saying therapy, he's saying therapy centers and being very, very non-judgmental and supportive throughout yeah. the entire process. He's saying, I know it's easier said than done. I know I'm giving a very simple, logical solution but mom sometimes simple solutions are all we need we don't exactly need we don't need to complicate it so much there will be exactly. times when our children are not open to these forms of help and yes at that point of time you need to become a strict par parent and help them see sometimes force will be needed because if the child is too young and if they don't yeah. understand they are not open for help and it's danger to their lives and their future of course you'll have to get a little bit strict and right. you some force but don't feel guilty saying i've seen so many people doing stuff to help their children and it's always not the right form and they feel so guilty so you have to keep guilt aside he's saying mom guilt and regret he's again writing in caps lock on the board he's writing and he's saying mom guilt and regret are, regret are two most uh wasted emotions we should always stay oh, away from yeah them. they don't serve any purpose yeah. He's saying it's done with. Guilt, it's done with. Learn from it. Move on. Forgive yourself. Yeah, Regret guilt is addressing something from the past with an emotion that's just going to erode your your heart. He's saying, yes, mom, and we just need healing. Yeah. Because it's done with. So we need to forgive ourselves, number one. We need to we need to heal that, that hurt, that past trauma, which is affecting us. And third, we need to let go. Yeah. These are the main three lessons you have invited when you're going through guilt. Yeah, and he's saying mom regret is almost on the same line so parents really need to be objective really need to have boundaries and they don't need to feel guilt and regret if their intention he's saying mom karma is all about intention even this is a huge topic he said mm. he said we're going to discuss about it what is good karma what is bad karma he's saying there is no good and bad yeah no if you if you take karma into action, if you talk about actions if you're talking about actions it's not about good or bad action it's about the intention behind that action, oh. which determines it's good or bad. And he's saying, mom, let's accept something which is good for you might be really bad for sweetie. So how can you how can you compartmentalize good and bad? You just cannot because it's so very subjective. But if you need to understand if something you're going to do is good or not so good, he's saying, I'll never say bad, good or not so good. I would say look at the intention behind it. And he's saying we're going to talk about it more in our next lecture. Okay. This is for our next lecture. For now, we'll stop here. Uh, 26 Jan, <laughs> the free question and yes, answer. Yes, let's session. talk about that. Yes. He's saying we'll be announcing it, uh, all the question and answers related to soul plan sessions. And he's saying I would love all those who, you know, follow the lectures religiously and they're trying to apply it in their practical lives question regarding how to apply it in our practical lives. He will be the best questions for this session and I'll be present for two hours. And he's saying, let's do this, mom. That's going to be awesome. Eric, how did you get so smart? <laughs> I always ask him every single day. When he manages to throw a beautiful, intelligent line, I say, oh, when did you become so smart? <laughs> oh. <laughs> See, like sort of yesterday know. that I was changing your diapers. <laughs> I swear, I feel the same, Eliza. I mean, it was 2009 I connected with him and I've like seen him grow as a soul also. I feel he's, he's grown up with me. He did so yeah. beautiful. 
That is beautiful. <laughs> All right, you guys, check out her information in the description box below. Follow her. Follow me, uh, us, Eric and I on TikTok. We're starting to do some lives. And also... You know, subscribe to this channel and the Atlanta Scanner channel. Love you all. Bye, Renuka. Bye, Bye. sweetheart. I love you, Eric. Bye, Mama. You say. Bye. Love you. Love you. <laughs>